welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming the, what is this called? The Spill the Tea mini tag. And this tag was created by Liv Loves Her Makeup, who you guys know I love her channel. I haven't really been watching her as much just because I feel like I've been busy and I feel like Liv's busy too because she's moving, I believe, to Minnesota. And I don't have Snapchat <laughs> anymore. Um, I got rid of the app. I just couldn't. After they did that last update, it was a pain in the ass. So everyone's been doing these spill the tea tags and I first watched it and I saw the questions and I was like, I feel like that's for like bigger YouTube gurus, like people that have a lot of followers on their channel. Um, but then I saw a lot of my smaller, fr like smaller channel friends creating this tag as well and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll do it. So decided to do it and I will try and remember to leave the questions down in the description box. I don't feel like people tag their friends anymore. I feel like they're just like, if you're a content creator, just do this tag. And I feel like that's the least, like that's the best way to just not hurt anyone's feelings. So if you are a content creator and you are kind of on the fence about do doing this tag video, just go ahead and do it because either people will watch it or they won't, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? So first question, which video were you afraid to post on YouTube and why? So I didn't feel like I had a good answer. To this question, until this week, I filmed and posted a video called um, I Am an Immigrant. Um, basically, it was a story time video, like barely even scratching the surface of an iceberg. That is my story when it came to moving to the United States. I know it's kind of, it's not like a taboo subject, but it's just hard to talk about because everyone has a different story. And I feel like the time we live in, unfortunately, um, I do feel like there is a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment. I have not faced that yet on this video. So I'm so thankful to the few people that have watched the video. They were so kind. Um, maybe people have learned to, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. I haven't gotten any mean comments on that video and I'm so grateful. There have been so many people that have just left nice comments saying like, hey, I'm glad you're here and I think that's so cool. And uh, yeah, hopefully that message you know, does spread and people will be more positive. I know it's hard because I think people think of immigrants as a certain type of person. And when you hear, I mean, when people hear me on the phone, um, I don't think they think I'm from another country. I sound very, you know, Midwestern. I do have a little bit of the accent or maybe even quite a bit of the accent. And I have a very white sounding name, like my name is Karen, but that's the actual name my parents gave me because my mom, just to get into like a history lesson, is of Dutch descent from Sri Lanka because the Dutch occupied Sri Lanka at a time. So there are different colonies, the British, the Dutch, the Portuguese. Um, so because of her Dutch heritage, I think she gave me the name Karen, but then a lot of people in Sri Lanka have very English sounding names so you wouldn't know but then my last name before I got married was B-O-P-E-A-R-A-C-H-C-H-I which is pronounced Boparachi and then when I got married I married a Harris which I was really excited about having a short last name so then I became Karen Harris and I'm like you know people don't realize sometimes that not only brown people are immigrants white people can be immigrants too like my husband for example he is very British sounding, but he's actually from South Africa and he's an immigrant as well. His parents, his dad is an immigrant. Um, so we have this very, you know, diverse family and uh, I'm okay with that. So anyway, that video was really kind of like, I was worried about posting it because I didn't want to deal with mean comments and I, I feel like you have to be careful. I know YouTubers, just our generation, we put a lot of ourselves out there on the internet and it is scary because I think of like parents that put up like pictures of their kids and stuff like people being born in this time like their whole life is going to be on Facebook and I think of like the technology that is coming out and like could it be someday that you know hackers can find like the answers to your security questions on Facebook because guess what your mom posted the name of your first grade teacher posted a picture of your first car like you know, they they might be able to find all that. And when people say like, hey, your house got broken into because you posted on Facebook that you were on vacation, like, that's scary to me. So anyway, I, I felt like I tried to put myself out there in that video, but also like try and keep some things like personal. Um, but yeah, that was really scary. 
Um, but so far the response to that video has been really good. So I'm really excited about that. The other video, I wasn't scared to post it, but once I posted I was like, okay, people are getting a little psycho, was my Pat McGrath video. It was either the review video or the swatch video. Um, I think my reviews or swatches were like one of the first videos to go up. So those videos have quite a few views and some people were just like getting into fights on that comment section and I ended up just blocking everyone um, because yeah I could so I did <laughs> whatever um, so that is my long answer to that question number two as your channel grows do you find it more difficult to stick to your original opinions so when I heard other beauty gurus do this tag I was like fuck I've had the same opinions forever like I'm so good at being decisive and like the brands I like I like the brands I don't like I don't like and then one day I was bored on YouTube and I decided to go back and watch all my will I buy it videos and uh, boy was I in for a rude awakening because it was so funny watching me talk even just like last year like I think I started doing will I buy it's in like 2017 like August or something and just hearing my opinions on some things and then I'm like, oh, I bought that. Like I said, I wasn't going to and I gave you a list of reasons why, but I bought it. And I just thought it was so hilarious because I kind of thought it would be fun to do a video where I go back, watch all my Will I Buy It videos and then tell you if I actually bought something that I said I wasn't going to um, or vice versa. I think that would be really fun to do. So yeah, I realized that my opinions are constantly changing on products on palettes and I think that's okay because it's just makeup like you don't have to have like this huge stance on something like for example last year um, when Huda Beauty was releasing like highlighters or something I was like on a Huda rampage like I was pissed like I wasn't even sure if I was gonna buy the Desert Dust palette and now I think of Huda and I'm like wait I like that brand well now she did something shady again so I'm not really sure but there was a point where I was loving her liquid lipsticks, I love her foundation, I love the Desert Dust palette, so it's really interesting to see how your like opinion evolves and you don't even realize it because I feel like in YouTube especially, like a month is like a minute in the life of YouTube. This is such a fast paced community, it is so difficult to keep up, I honestly don't feel any like, I, I don't feel any desire to be a beauty guru. Um, because or like a bigger channel because it is really really hard to keep up I know the standards are really really insane and yeah so I always think of like I feel like I learned a really good lesson um, watching some of my older videos because I genuinely thought that there was nothing I had like really changed my mind about um, but now I I feel like my my mind is constantly evolving and I think that's a good thing because it means I'll give more brands a chance instead of just completely writing things off. Okay, question number three. Someone leaves a shitty comment that isn't relevant to the video. Do you delete it or respond? I'm always tempted to respond to shitty comments. I actually, I do get offended, I'm not gonna lie. I always try to play, off, play it off like I'm too cool for school, but sometimes I do get a little bit like annoyed and I wanna be snarky and be like, seriously, like go make a channel and make a YouTube video and then start commenting on people's videos because it is like you're putting yourself out there so, so much. Um, so it is annoying when people like are like, oh, this or that. But on the other hand, like, am I doing my best job on YouTube? No, because this is a hobby. Like. I'm not about to beat this face every night to film YouTube videos. Like, this is me after a whole day of work and I put some lipstick on. Like, this is the best it's gonna get for this tag video. So, anyway, what I do is I do, I don't delete them, I just block the person because I feel like at that point I'm just doing you a favor because, like, why do you wanna be on my channel if it bothers you, you know? So, I, I took a page out of Makeup Struggles book. I think she was very smart in deciding to just block people that annoy her because like what's the point? Like what are you going to achieve? Um, so I just block them and it's it's totally fine. So yeah, that's my best advice. If people annoy you on the internet, just block them. I like to keep the comment up there for spite and to fuel, fuel my hate fire, but other than that, it doesn't really bother me. Okay, number four. Tell us how you feel about your channel currently. Are you happy? Are you not? So this one is a tough one because I feel like most people try to be positive on their YouTube channels. For me, it is a little bit difficult. I do feel like I have, you know, made strides 
um, when it comes to my channel because I've learned to edit my YouTube videos on my own. When I first started, I was so clueless. Nothing was edited. I didn't have a setup. And I'm not saying like I have this like fancy setup, but um, luckily my husband is an angel. And he just took interest in my hobbies. And so he helped me with my camera, um, my lights. And he used to actually sit behind the camera and help me record when I was first getting into YouTube. And after a while, it just got overwhelming for him because he was helping me with that. He was also helping me edit my videos. So he finally sat down and taught me how to edit. And he, you know, taught me how to film on my own. So I have this, like, handy little remote that I use. So in that sense, I'm really proud of myself because I feel like the things I learn on YouTube do apply to other parts of my life. Um, it's not something I use as an everyday, like, career thing. But it could, you know, maybe get there someday, which is, you know, cool, whatever. Um, I'm not saying a career in YouTube, I'm just saying like I would love to be like a social media manager or like a content creator for another brand or something or like work in fashion or work at like Sephora, that would be super cool. Um, so anyway, whatever. So that's, that part makes me happy. Like I feel like I'm learning things, I feel like, you know, I'm learning new techniques. Just feels my passion and drive for, you know, every day and this is like my main hobby so I love that part. But I think it can be discouraging because, first of all, you're not making money. Like, <laughs> you're not. Um, I feel like I'm sometimes very laid back in that sense because I feel like I've seen a lot of YouTubers that are, like, go-getters. And I see, like, these YouTubers, like, making friends with each other. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, do these people, like, how much time do these people have on their hands that they're constantly, like, either in communication or, like, how are they taking the time to build these relationships? Um, because it is a lot of work. I mean, even reaching out to one YouTuber once a week is a lot of work. And then you have to keep the conversation going because you don't really know these people in real life. So it's tough. Like, you know, I so I get a little bit like down about that because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I get excited when people mention me. But then I see like other people getting mentioned. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I wonder how like I can get to that stage. Like, do people think I'm shitty at makeup? Like, is that why they don't like my channel? Is that why they don't mention me? Like, that stuff does come up. It doesn't, like, affect me, like, to my core where I'm, like, actually, like, depressed about it. Uh, but I think even the most confident people in this world do wonder things like that. And I, I wonder that. I'm like, shoot, like, if I could get, you know, this YouTuber to mention me, then maybe people will follow my channel. And I have to constantly remind myself, like, hey, Karen, you know what? It's your journey. Um, some people do, you know, luck get, not lucky, but sometimes it works out and their videos go viral or they hit that, like, unique concept that everyone is dying to hear their thoughts about. And it works out for them. And sometimes I watch people on YouTube that have been doing YouTube, like, for six months and they have, like, more subscribers than me. And I've been on YouTube, like, I've been on and off YouTube for about seven eight years and I have like not as many subscribers as them so I'm like is it something I'm doing wrong should I have different content maybe people will like me better if I'm this way or if I'm that way but you know what can you do so um, I would say overall the vibe is happy um, about my channel I feel like you know I try my best to be myself as authentic as I can be um, and I try to be, you know, a, a resource for my subscribers. That's what I want to be. I want people to think of me and be like, hey, is Karen getting that palette? Like, what does Karen think? Like, that would just be my ultimate goal is to just be a resource to my subscribers. So that makes me happy. But, yeah, sometimes I feel like you put in so much work and the payoff is, like, dollar-wise is definitely non-existent, but sometimes it's just like, ugh, you know, you work hard on a video and it's like, oh, only 50 people watch it, but that's okay. You know what? It's fine. Um, I've just come to that place in my life where I've decided, like, this is going to be my hobby and I'm going to, you know, try and keep to a schedule, um, but if I don't make it, I don't make it. That's okay. People will understand and we will keep on keeping on on this channel. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed my little spill the tea mini tag. Thank you so much, Liv, for creating this tag. I think it's an amazing tag video. It's such a great idea. And I encourage all of you to either leave your answers down below if you are a content creator or make this video hello 
or if you already have made this video, just comment it in my comment section because I would love to watch it. I'm always looking for new YouTubers to watch because I have actually gotten rid of almost all the big ones because I just, I can't watch them. So sometimes I'm a little bit low on things to watch and sometimes I'm like, holy shit, I got like 80 videos to watch. So anyway, if you're a content creator, just leave me a comment. Don't do like a freaking sub for sub comment, like a genuine like, hey, I made this video about this and I think you'd love it. Like a will I buy it video, like if you do will I buy it videos, let me know. Or if you do anti hauls, I love them both. So yeah, otherwise I will be back on my channel and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.